All right. So next up, we have Kalgoorlie Gold Mining. Kalgold is uh, ASX code KAL. It has a market cap of $5 million. Kalgoorlie Gold Mining is exploring targeted areas in the eastern gold fields of Western Australia. The company has tenure over areas that have not been explored for decades in some instances. Uh, we welcome today Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Matt Painter. Matt, welcome back and uh, please take it away. Thanks very much, Manny. It's uh, great to be back on, on Share Cafe. So uh, thank you very much for the invite. Uh, look, I'll like to take you through what we're doing at uh, Calgold at the moment. I'm very excited, actually, about uh, some of the things that are going on there at the moment. Just this title page here um, shows one of the things that after a century and a quarter of mining around Kalgoorlie, you'd think would be all gone. But it's, this is outcropping gold. And this is some excavations that some prospectors made at our La Mascot deposit. Um, with our geos there checking out what's going on. So gold veins are poking out of the ground at Lomo Scott, only 35 kilometres from Kalgoorlie. For some reason, this has been overlooked and we're onto it. So we're pretty excited about this one. Next slide, please. Uh, the usual disclaimers, I'll let you read them at your leisure. Next slide, please. So here we are. Cal Gold has a focus on one of the richest gold provinces in the world. Uh, the eastern gold fields of Western Australia. Um, it's been mined for a century and a quarter, as I've mentioned, but it continues to uh, show that it is not done yet. Uh, and my personal view is that there is a lot more to be found out there, and that's what we're tar why we're targeting what we're targeting. Uh, we've got a number of projects throughout the area, from Perrin Vale up in the in the northwest, down to Bulong Taurus in the south, and Pinjin out to the east. But I'll just take you through a couple of projects today, namely Pinjin and Bulong Taurus. Uh, uh, Pinjin is our new farm in tenure. We only uh, got into this in uh, in in May June. Uh, one of the things that's really attractive about this area is its active M and A region. Uh, as Ramilos Resources shores up its feedstock for its proposed Rebecca Mill, only twenty kilometres to the south of us. It's a major project. It's a major commitment. They acquired. Uh, breaker resources recently uh, for their Lake Row deposit, about 80 kilometres away to help feed into a proposed Rebecca Mill. Um, and so we figure we're in a very interesting area um, of known gold mineralisation where um, we can help feed into a potential mill um, should it eventuate. Uh, we've got shallow high grade hits from our, only one of our prospects on that 20 kilometres. Um, there's plenty more to check yet. And we've expanded it out to 1150 metres from just 300 metres a couple of months ago. Um, and there's more to be done there yet. At Bulong Taurus, closer to Kalgoorlie, we've got one of the lowest cost, cost jork resources I've ever seen in recent times. And it's only 35 k's from Cal. And gold mineralisation there is open at depth in all directions. So we'll briefly take you through that at the end. So if I can go to the next slide, please. Here we are at Pingen. So this is our first gold pro, our first first gold drilling program in June this year. I think it was in May, early June, uh, and this is at the Kagala Gift. Um, and we're looking southward, and the brown towards the horizon you can see out there is Lake Rebecca, and Romilius's Rebecca project is just the other side of that brown patch over there, directly along strike from us. Um, and this is the first of several holes that we uh, drilled and the first of uh, two programs drilled so far and the third going to commence soon. Next slide, please. So this is a bit of a modification, this map here of the previous one. And what it shows is what is one of the major controlling structures uh, in the region, the Laverton Tectonic Zone. Um, about 30 million ounces of gold along that thing uh, and includes uh, deposits like Sunrise Dam, Red October, Wallaby, Granny Smith and what have you. Um, and even just looking on this map, you can see there's a rough symmetry to this thing and we're at the southern end of it. Uh, the outcrop of rocks and gold and what have you in the eastern gold fields is notoriously uh, poor. Uh, but even on that scale, the, the, the amount of outcrop to the north of the Laban Tectonic Zone is much, much better. And that's probably one of the reasons why there's been so many discoveries up there. In the south, a lot less outcrop. Uh, a lot less exploration, but that's our opportunity. And we've got form in finding things undercover, and that's what we're going to do down here. So in this area, in the south, we've got 246 kilometres squared of granted uh, licences and applications. And just south of Pingen itself, um, south of the Anglo-Saxon gold mine, we've got about 20 kilometres of strike. Um, so there's plenty of other prospects and targets being generated throughout the entire tenement package. Uh, and just along strike to the south of us, we've got uh, Remilius Resources doing their 
project, building their project up at Rebecca. Um, and we've got Tenya right next door to them. Um, we've uh, cooperated with them uh, for one of their regional surveys. Um, and so it's good to be in communication and have a good relationship with our neighbours like that. Um, and yeah, in a direct line, our Kigala Gift prospect that we've started drilling on is only about 21 kilometres from that proposed Rebecca plant. Next slide, please. Uh, just an oblique image just to show you I love this. It sort of starts to put it in perspective a little bit for us. So in the bottom left, you can see the Anglo-Saxon gold mine owned by Hawthorne Resources. And then 500 metres east of that is where our tenure starts. And between the farming tenure in pink and applications and granted tenure in black, uh, we cover about 20 kilometres strike length southward and along strike uh, between Anglo-Saxon and, and Rebecca. Um, there's known mineralisation in the area. There's known mineralisation just off some of our tenure at Wessex and Harbour Lights in the foreground there. Uh, and, but our initial work has been focusing in on Kigella Gift and Providence. And what we want to do is get a good understanding of what's going on there and then push that out and expand it, uh, expand that knowledge to the remaining the remainder of the area and shore up as much gold as we can throughout the area. Next slide, please. So we started off at Kigella Gift which uh, in this diagram here is that cluster of uh, drill collars in the centre there with uh, lots of nice colours on it. Um, it covers around 300 metres strike length. And look, when we started there, that was roughly about the known extent of it. To the south was the Providence Discovery, which was discovered in 2015 and never followed up. Um, we have good reason to suspect that there could be a connection there. And that's one of the things we're going to test. We haven't done that yet, but that will be coming. But through our work and our diligence of putting together historic data and what have you, we've now expanded this search space out to about 1150 metres from 300 metres just on these prospects alone. What we're superimposed on here is the magnetics. And you can see there's some, um, there's a magnetic ridge and offsets on that seem to be host to the gold mineralisation. And Providence has only just been tickled. And look, this isn't the greatest hits of all the, all the, um, of the, all the intercepts here. These are just some of the most recent ones, plus one of the good ones, 33 at three from 51 metres, not bad at all. But recently we've just confirmed at uh, Kigella North that we've got the mineralisation. It was a bit, a bit opaque what's going on through there. We've just managed to push that through. And in the south, we've got anomalism just from surface sampling that's never really been followed up or near surface sampling. Um, and we suspect that this could be the continuation of the mineralisation all the way through. So we've got a number of things to test out here. Next slide, please. So one of the things we did recently was follow up uh, initial discovery holes from 2015 pro by previous explorers. So they're the KGRC holes, the shorter numbered ones. Ours most recent ones are the KGRC 23 holes. Uh, and from that drilling, which was just a confirmatory program, we got things like four, 5.63 from 39 metres within a lot larger envelope of 11 at 2.5. Those sorts of shallow numbers are great. Um, you know, we're, we're not very deep at all. We're within open pitable distance and to get grades like that out here is pretty significant. What we need to do now is work out where this gold's going. We've got an idea of what it's looking like in, in cross section, which is what you can see here. Um, but which way is it plunging? Is, how far north and south is it heading? And that's what we're going to start doing, start testing shortly uh, when we start drilling before the end of the year. Next slide, please. And this is a long section looking towards the east. Um, it's difficult to show here. We're still in the asking questions phase with some of this, if you like, but you can see the amount of historic drilling that's been done at Kigella Gift and the lack of it at Providence. So we've got an idea of what's going on at Kigella Gift, still plenty of questions to ask, um, but at Providence, is the thing plunging to the south as shown here? Is it plunging to the north? We don't know that yet. Is there a connection between Kigella Gift and Providence? We don't know that yet. What's going on at Kigella North? Again, we don't know. So we've got some work to do. And we're going to start off and do it in a systematic scientific method. We're going to step out from Providence with our next program and see what we get. And then from there, work smartly, build up to the next phase, hopefully connecting the two or following Providence further south, whatever it might be. Next slide, please. And just a step back from Kigella Providence, which is our initial target area, this is just a quick view of what we're dealing with further north, closer towards the Anglo-Saxon pit at the top end of the Pynchon South area. Uh, and here we've got our Wessex, Wessex South and Harbour Lights extension targets. And they're all based on adjacent drilling um, from historic work. So there's virtually no drilling on our tenure, which in itself for me is quite exciting. Um, but these well-drilled prospects 
on adjacent tenure have never been drilled on our tenure. Um, at Wessex, drilling came right up to the tenement boundary, angled towards our tenure, and then the final holes right on the tenement boundary went vertically. So clearly something was being followed, and we want to see what's going on on the other side. Uh, we've just had a tenement, a small little postage stamp tenement granted there just to give us that continuity of tenure, um, but that allows us to test Wessex South as well. And when we see things like 22 metres at 5.6 at Harbour Lights just to the north and that magnetic ridge that defines that mineralisation comes belting on through to 1127 tenement just to the south there, we've got some work to do down there. So we get all the tenement granted through there, we've got an application to the south and we'll get on with all that. We're really quite excited about getting stuck into those uh, targets. Uh, next slide, please. Beulong Taurus, I mentioned the outcropping gold. These are taken from surface, from near surface, uh, from that little pit, I think it was. Uh, and you can see these are just chunks of quartz vein with gold in them. Lovely, lovely stuff. Next slide, please. So where are we? We're just immediately east of Kalgoorlie. The Beulong Road is uh, sealed all the way out to Beulong, where the curve on the road is. Uh, and we're surrounded by some nice neighbours as well. We've got Murray at Beulong, 259,000 ounces, the Cannon deposit, which was something that uh, five years ago, everybody wanted one of those, um, 47,000 ounces sitting there. Um, we've recently, uh, earlier this year, defined the resource that Lamas Scott is 138,000 ounces. And again, the key here is that this thing is poking out of the ground. There's a pod of quite good grade, quite decent grade, and in some places high grade, gold mineralization just below surface. And it's only 35 Ks from Kel. Um, and then one of the key things about the resource, or a couple of key things, one, it's first pass. This is the first resource we've calculated on this and it's inferred. Second, it's amenable to the higher grade cutoff. So if we've done a 0.6 gram per tonne cutoff on this. Um, if we took that up to one, 1.2, 1 1.5, we can you know, get a smaller number of tonnes or so, small number of ounces, but at, at a higher grade, so at twos and threes. So it's a really, really well behaving deposit. It's thick, it's loads of veins. And we did all that to find this new resource for less than $5 an ounce. Um, and I don't know of any others that have been done uh, for that uh, little cost. Next slide, please. Uh, the the, the, the uh, model that you can see in the top right is part of the uh, block model that was constructed to define the resource. And what you can see, it actually starts to show where all these veins are going. So I've got a massively thick stacked system of gold veins here, up to 175 metres thick. It might be thicker yet. Um, we're, on a, we're on a granted mining licence. Very handy. Um, open pit mining has been proposed and you can see a couple of possible pit shells there at around, um, you know, around current gold prices, just keep in, in, in mind that this is all very high level stuff, um, all desktop type of modeling, um, and it's work, it's, it's ongoing work that we're still trying to define. And we've worked out a number of ways that we can take this forward. We can check the down dip extent of this, step out and uh, see if this thing does extend to dip, which we highly suspect it does. Um, and there's a number of other programs that we can use here to get this thing underway. Um, talking to neighbours and what have you and other, other parties to see if there's, you know, what we can possibly do in this area. There's a whole series of ways we can move forward on this. And the other thing we've done too is we've just, uh, we've got a, a new mining license application over the area um, and that can help, help to bring in some of the satellite deposits and make this a bigger mining operation. The metallurgy is simple and plain from the historic work that's been done. There's just no issues with it. There's no deleterious elements in there. Um, and we've got these programs now ready to go we just got to see which way uh, we, we move forward on this thing. Uh, next slide, please. So very briefly, we've got a few bucks in the bank. Um, the, the, the market cap's lower than we'd like, but we figure that we're in a, an excellent position um, to really make that leap when they, I, I back up what Malcolm was talking about recently, that there's, there's green shoots and there's signs of a recovery in the gold market for juniors, and we want to be there for that. So we're making sure we do quality targeted work and we want to be recognised, we're already being recognised for that so that when that correction comes, we're moving in the right direction. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, thank you very much. Matt, thanks for that. Um, okay, there's a couple of questions that have uh, uh, come through, but I'll, I'll start with, based on the initial results at uh, Kajela Gift and, and Providence, um, you know, how confident are you you'll make a, a discovery that will eventually end up with you defining a jork resource? Uh, look, I think uh, I think we're, we're already seeing 
um, you know, we've made those discoveries. We're already onto this thing. What we need to see here is we don't need to find a world-beating deposit here, even though I think there's a chance we could. <laughs> but we don't need to find a world-beater. What we've got just to the south of us is a, is a new mill going in that's going to need feed. Um, if we can define, you know, something like the cannon deposit near Kalgoorlie, if we can find something along those lines, which is forty to 50,000 ounces, clearly that's going to be of interest to any new mill that's going in. So, you know, at the grades that we're talking about these things, that's two or 300 metres long, depending on the shape and the number of other things, of course. Um, you know, we're already over 1,150 metres. We've got 20 kilometres of strike here. We don't think that that's going to be the end of it. So, look, I think that, we're well on the track to defining resources. Um, we make sure that we vet all our historic information, historic data. We digitise, redigitize where we need to. We requalify data where we need to. That's how we got the resource so cheaply, done so cheaply at, uh, at La Mascot. Um, and well, what we intend to do, you saw the intensity of historic drilling at Kigala Gif. We can bring all that in. It's not going to be too much of an effort now from the work that we've done to bring all that in to a brand new resource. So what we want to do is to find something at Kigala Gift. We want to prove up whatever's going on at Providence just to the south. Hopefully that's something that will either be standalone by itself or it's something that we can start to bring together into a much bigger operation. And like I said, you know, something about 300 metres long can give us, you know, something that's of interest. That's where Kigala Gift was when we started, you know, a few months ago. Uh, hopefully we can get onto our new program by the end of the year and look, information uh, coming through this morning suggests we're going to start uh, um, just clearing off some of the uh, uh, proposed uh, drill collars positions uh, next week. Um, so we're getting ready to get that underway as soon as possible. Uh, and so that way we can get some new results out to market and start to paint a picture and start to get an understanding of where we take this thing. But yeah, on the road to Jork Resources, and I want to see that happen sooner rather than later. Okay, great. Um, one question that has come through is um, asking how you, or what was the process that led to the company uh, gaining more ground for your Pingen project? Was it a a public tender or was it proactively undertaken by you? Uh, proactively undertaken by us. It's something that has been in the works since before Calgold was listed. Um, we are pretty proud of the relationships we establish with the community, with Aboriginal stakeholders, with prospectors, with our next door neighbours, explorers and miners. Um, and that's absolutely key to working in a place like the Eastern Goldfields that is so established and um, has been operating for so long. And so it's something that, you know, even before uh, Romelius acquired uh, breaker resources, um, even before they announced they were going to put a mill in there, we thought, well, there's a big deposit going down south. You know, there's something big going on down there. Um, now this, is, this is a good area anyway. Plus, we've got a big neighbour coming through. Um, you know, this is clearly an area of interest. So it was a lot of discussions with prospectors. Some of the ground had been caught up uh, in, in uh, legal action prior to this, so, which is why it was off the table for so many people. But through our diligence and our, um, our relationships that we, that we cultivate and that we nurture, um, we've been able to um, work with our prospector partners and we still work with them on a daily basis. To, uh, to make sure that we can get onto this highly prospective ground. So it's something we've been eyeing for a while. So it took a while to get there, but once we did, um, you know, we're very happy with that. And we think it's got a huge potential. Okay, great. Uh, just to wrap it up, Matt, just one last question around balance sheet. Um, how, um, uh, given what you've just outlined and, and, and your drilling plans going forward for the next 12 months, um, how comfortable are you? The balance sheet's in good enough shape that, you know, it can deliver on on the requirements uh, that you have, you know, sort of uh, that you have lined up for the company in the next 12 months. Yeah, yeah. Look, we're in good shape, Manny. Um, what we want to do and what we are doing is being smart and targeted, and that's crucially important. And we've, we're incredibly fortunate to have the team that we've got. We're a small team, but we're um, highly active um, and highly knowledgeable and the, the, the team has uh, global experience in gold that we can bring back to the gold fields um, and plus we've got people based in Kalgoorlie 
So what um, what we are doing is being smart and targeted um, and looking at the potential that we've got so that anything that we get can be brought into a resource, for example, or move the project in a strategic direction um, and get us there. Now, clearly, if um, you know, my, you know, I've worked with some of the gold majors in the past and worked globally on various projects, um, gold projects, um, you know, when you've got more money to throw at things, yeah, you can go bigger and, and, and better. And, uh, you know, on a project of this size, you know, that'd be wonderful to do that one day. Um, but at the moment, we're very uh, concentrated, we're very focused, and we know exactly what we've got to do to start pushing this thing out. And if we get the results that we need to, and there's there's reason to accelerate, well, we'll look at that then. But uh, in the meantime, we're smart, focused, and paced, and we'll get on with it that way. Matt? Thanks for your time today. That was great and um, and have a great weekend. We'll hopefully see you back soon. Many thanks, Manny. Good to see you again.